Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about RFID, radio frequency identification. Now, when we talk about RFID, we usually talk about tracking something, something that's moving. Now, to track something that's moving, you need some kind of tracking tag. And that's what this is here. It's a little tracking tag. So you could track animals. Some farmers track their cows. You could track people. Now, for commercial applications, you could track shipping containers, uh, semi-trucks in the trailer, uh, rail cars. Now this tag is off a rail car. So the information you put on this tag can be the rail car ID, the serial number, uh, the owner of the rail car, the type of car. It could be an oil tanker, a coal car, or a grain car. So whenever this, this tag enters a train yard or a shipping port, the reader will extract that information out of this tag. And it will send that information to a cloud-based system. Now you can get access to this data on the internet so the owner could tell where his car is. He could, tell, he, could, he could track it across the country. So how does this tag work? This tag doesn't have any batteries. It doesn't have a radio on board. But if I put this tag into the RF field of the reader, it would actually extract the data out of this tag. So how does that work? Well, it uses a technique called backscatter. Now, to understand how backscatter works, we need to go back to basic antenna theory. Okay, here's a diagram of a half-wave dipole antenna, which is feeding the input of a radio receiver that has an input impedance of 50 ohms. Now if we transmit RF energy at the correct frequency towards this antenna, the antenna will resonate and current will flow in the antenna. And the current will be maximum at the feed point indicated by this line here. Now on the positive cycle, current will flow down through the 50 ohms and on the negative cycle, current will flow up through the 50 ohms of the receiver. Now if an antenna can receive, it can also transmit. It's a reciprocal system. So the radio could send out RF energy at the correct frequency into the antenna, and the antenna will radiate RF energy into free space. The RFID tag also has a half-wave dipole antenna, but instead of a 50 ohm termination across the feed point, it has a transistor across the feed point. Now when this transistor is off, the feed point will be open circuit. Now when the reader sends RF energy at the correct frequency towards this tag, towards the antenna, there will be little or no current flowing through the antenna because of the open circuit condition. Now if we turn the transistor on and short out the feed point, now when the reader sends RF energy at the correct frequency towards the antenna, this antenna will resonate and there will be maximum current flowing through the antenna. Now because there's maximum current flowing through the antenna, this antenna will actually radiate. It will actually radiate power back towards the reader. It will become like a little transmitter. Now this reflection of power back towards the reader is called backscatter. And the reader uses the backscatter to decode the data. Now on the tag, we feed the data stream into the base of the transistor. So when the data level is high, the transistor will be on and will get maximum backscatter. Now when the data level is low, the transistor will be off and will get minimum backscatter. So now our data will be, will be encoded as amplitude modulation and pulse width modulation. So it makes it easier to decode and there's less errors. Okay, let's have a closer look at this RFID tag. Now the tag is basically a printed circuit board and we can see some circuitry here. Now this chip here holds the data that the reader will extract. Now this is the programming port that programs the data into the chip using a special programmer. Now the reader sends RF energy into this tag and on board the tag there are some diodes which rectify that RF energy into DC power to power up the chip and the rest of the circuitry. Now once this chip here is powered up, it will send a continuous data stream into this control transistor here. Now this control transistor shorts the feed point of the dipole antenna to cause backscatter. Now this is one element of the antenna, so it's from here to here, it's about three inches. Now on the back side is the other element of the antenna, the same dimensions, but from here to here is three inches. So this, together with this, gives you a dipole antenna and this is the feed point here with the feed point control transistor. So this transistor shorts the feed point of the dipole antenna to cause backscatter according to the data that comes out of this chip. So next time you see one of these tags on a rail car or a shipping container, you know that it doesn't, it doesn't contain a battery and it uses backscatter to extract the data.